Srebrenica. In a war known for its brutality and civilian suffering, what happened in the eastern Bosnian enclave in July 1995 stands out for its savagery. As the Bosnian conflict neared its end after more than three years of bloodshed, the Muslim-majority town of Srebrenica fell to the Bosnian Serb army. In the days that followed, more than 8,000 Bosnian Muslim men and boys were systematically killed by the Serbs and buried in hidden mass graves. As this was going on, tens of thousands of women and young children were expelled from the area. It remains the worst atrocity in Europe since the Holocaust. What makes the massacre even worse is the fact Srebrenica had been declared a safe area by the United Nations. Peacekeeping forces were deployed to the region and Bosnian Muslim refugees were promised protection by the international community. But when Bosnian Serb General Ratko Mladic led his army to an assault on Srebrenica, the world did little to stop the ensuing slaughter. In 2001, a United Nations court ruled that this mass murder of the Muslims in eastern Bosnia constituted genocide. In 2007, the International Court of Justice came to the same conclusion. Today, I'm travelling to Srebrenica from the central Bosnian city of Zenica. I want to see how the genocide is being remembered 20 years on. And I'm particularly interested to see how the Serbs, who now dominate the area, are acknowledging these war crimes that were committed against Muslims. I really have mixed feelings about this visit today. There's a desire within me to properly understand and comprehend the events that occurred there. But there's also a part of me that thinks what happened and such inhumanity shouldn't properly be understood and comprehended. A few days before embarking on my journey, I sat down with my wife's Muslim grandfather to discuss Srebrenica. Enver Lelic was directly involved with the army of Bosnia and Herzegovina during the war, and he seems like a good starting point to find out where the genocide sits in the mind of the average Bosnian. Kad govoriš taj, 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 treba ti sat, dva, da nabrojiš pobjene ljude, djecu, muževe, očeve. Samo crno pred očima. Lelic reserves special criticism for the world's lack of action to defend the Muslims in eastern Bosnia. Srebrenica je samo završetak četničkog plana protjerivanje i ubijanja bošnjačkih muslimana sa terena Poče, Višegrada i ostali istočne Bosne muslimana gdje su palili, ubijali, klali i narod pred takvom represijom kao što sad Isil radi. I čitava Evropa i svijet reaguje, a u tom momentu Za spas bošnjaka muslimana Evropa nije reagovala nikako. Imali su slobodne ruke da rade od nas ta oče i kako oče. As I edge closer to Srebrenica, the road becomes littered with reminders of where some of the most heinous crimes were committed in July 1995. Like Nova Kasaba, for example, where Muslim prisoners were held captive on the local football pitch before being executed and Konjevic Polje, where the school was used to hold detainees before their deaths, and also Glogova, where several mass graves related to the genocide have been located. Yet among these towns tainted by horror and evil, there's one in particular that stands out, Kravica. Before my visit, I had heard about a warehouse in the village that it had been used to slaughter at least 1,000 Muslims in one night. I'd also heard that the Serb majority in Kravica held a very different view of the Srebrenica genocide, with some even claiming that they were the real victims, defending themselves against Muslim aggressors. 
Today, in the center of Kravitsa, a 25-foot-high Orthodox cross has been erected to honor the Bosnian Serbs who died in the region during the war. Engraved into the cross is a claim the number of Serbian deaths was more than 3,000. But researchers say this assertion is a myth and that the actual number of Serbs killed here was at least three times smaller. And although there were indeed civilian victims, the majority were fighters. But what is most chilling to me during my visit to Kravitsa is what is missing. A short distance from the cross is the notorious warehouse which was used as a major execution site on the evening of July 13, 1995. It's easy to miss since there are no signs to reveal a massive war crime was committed in this spot. In fact, the warehouse now serves as a storage shed for farm equipment. What's striking about this place is we're only a few hundred metres down the road from where we, where we saw the big orthodox monument to Bosnian Serbs who died during the war. But here we are in this warehouse where on one single night we saw at least 1,000 Muslims killed with grenades and bullets. But there's absolutely nothing here 20 years on to really indicate what occurred here. After Kravitsa, I head on to the Potocari Memorial Centre, dedicated to the 8,000 victims of the genocide. Next to the cemetery is the former UN base where the Muslims sought safety and protection, but did not receive it. One of the things I find most difficult to comprehend while standing here is that after the Holocaust, the world said never again. Yet in Europe, a short distance away, at the end of the same century, it did happen as the world watched on. This home overlooks the cemetery in Potocari. It was known during the war as the White House and is where Bosnian Serbs took captured men and subjected them to violence before taking them to execution sites. Eyewitness testimony suggests up to 1,000 Muslims were literally crammed into the house at the same time. Despite the dark history inside these walls, the house is not preserved to educate people about what happened here. In fact, less than two decades on, a Bosnian Serb calls this place home. After Porochari, my final stop is the town of Srebrenica itself. This is where Ratko Mladic proudly waltzed through the empty streets on July 11, 1995, shortly after the Muslims fled to the UN base. 
A Serbian journalist captured the moment on camera. Before the war, Muslims made up three quarters of Srebrenica's population. Now they are a minority. Bringing to justice those responsible for the genocide has been a slow and painstaking process. General Ratko Mladic remained at large until May 2011, when he was finally arrested and indicted for war crimes. Radovan Karadzic was the political leader of the Bosnian Serbs during the war, and is sometimes referred to as the architect of the ethnic cleansing in eastern Bosnia. He enjoyed 13 years of freedom before he was captured and charged with genocide. As of today, Mladic and Karadzic remain on trial in the Netherlands and are yet to be found guilty. Aside from these leaders, barely a few dozen Bosnian Serbs have been prosecuted for their part in the mass killings around Srebrenica. As I walk through the streets of the town today, I wonder whether it's possible to achieve justice. A killing operation of this size must have required at least hundreds of participants. It must have required people to stand guard over the prisoners, to transport them to execution sites, and to bury and then rebury their remains. With so few people prosecuted, it's almost certain that many got away with their crimes and remain free to this day. In some strange way, I feel like the war is still going on in this area. Yes, the bullets have stopped, the shelling has stopped, and the killing is, is over. But the battle to achieve justice goes on. And the battle to coexist together peacefully continues with each new generation. Yet perhaps the biggest challenge 20 years after the Srebrenica genocide is for Serbs to fully recognise the crimes that were committed here against Muslims. Many continued to deny that what happened was an act of genocide. These deniers are not just anonymous names on the internet. They include current Republika Srpska president Milorad Dodik. Believe it or not, President Dodik even testified on behalf of Radovan Karadzic at his war crimes trial just two years ago. During my visit to Srebrenica today, I have seen firsthand how elements of the genocide have been ignored and how its memory goes unpreserved. Famous author George Orwell once wrote, who controls the past controls the future. And there are Bosnians who fear that if the magnitude of this atrocity continues to be downplayed, and the history is altered to suit the Serbian conscience, then there's always a chance that what happened in Srebrenica could happen again. <laughs>